A Man in a Mare's World, Chapter 4, Part 2. What, what, what in tarnation was that? He just, he just ate a whole group of ponies. Why, why would he do something like this? Zakora shook her head as Twilight knelt down in front of the guards that fell before the savage might of this bestial side of scorn. It was not him that did this. Not voluntarily. Princess Luna nodded. Indeed. Sister and I have known about the traits and effects of the amulet for centuries on end. Its origins may forever be a mystery, but we do know that the extent of the corruption goes far beyond even the darkest foes of Equestria. Celestia swallowed some of her own bile down as she came to grips with what she saw, rubbing her throat before she spoke again. Yes, but if Scorn has the amulet and he kept it all this time, just how many incidents have happened? Only one. Every pony turned to Zakora as she sifted through her cloak. You heard him in the past. The human has only ever done this once before, but it did not last. We have learned how to stab off the amulet's hunger, but any sign of weakness will enact the corruption, and everything around it will be torn asunder. Both princesses and Twilight by extension were shocked at this. So the amulet was controllable? How? No pony in the history of this nation has ever been able to remain stable and whole while wearing such a powerful artifact. What they've just witnessed now is proof of that, but then again, Twilight remembered the week that had passed. If Scorn was wearing the amulet the entire time, he was most definitely using its powers for the right reasons. With murder aside, he stopped a robbery, saved a filly in a well, rescued Pinky and the Cakes, and even repaired Sugarcube Corner. Any power used responsibly like that was guaranteed to show that the Alicorn Amulet was controllable, and it appeared that Scorn was the best candidate and host for such a dark element. We have to find him. We have to show him that we mean no harm to him. Finding him will be difficult, for when he is frightened, he makes it impossible to consult. Zikor motioned to Celestia and Luna. And if they were to find him first, it would only drive him further into his thirst. Celestia looked down at the armored ponies, kneeling down next to Twilight and being very careful not to get her Roman-designed dress bloodied. I still do not understand. Why are these ponies out here? Why was a guard squadron sent to the Everfree in the first place? That's because they're not ours. Both Luna and Celestia looked over at Gleaming Shield as she was reading a scroll sent to her. I sent word that there were casualties out here and I just got a response from the general. All Royal Guard squadrons are back at the castle. Rarity blinked. So then, who are these mares? I'm not sure, but unless Squad 47 back at Canelock Castle all have twin sisters, we're looking at imposters of some kind. Gleaming rolled up the scroll and sent another to the castle. You all go. I'll have a few more guards help round up the corpses and take them back to the Morgan Ponyville. Something doesn't add up here. Twilight stood up. <sighs> right. Be careful, Gleaming. Come on, girls. Gleaming Shield waved to them as they rushed through the forest, leaving Zakora and the princesses behind with the captain as they rushed in the direction of Scorn's departure, hoping to find him before he got too far. <sighs> Scorn leapt through the air as he arched into the river, taking a few gulps to clear out his throat. Coming out the other side, he found his suit now clean from the blood. Although, that wouldn't stop Scorn from looking down and still seeing it as a memory. I'm starting to really see why no pony would ever in their lifetime use this thing. He clenched his fist as he looked down at his hand. This... this needs to stop. I've proven my point already. Scorn is a revered and feared name. That's all I wanted. I'll be accepted. Finally. He reached up for the Alicorn Amulet. I won't be needing this anymore. He gripped the emblem and tugged blinking as the trinket didn't move. He tried again, this time pulling harder and harder, but for the life of him it felt as if this thing was attached to him, as the braces on his arm and leg were. Oh shit. He pulled again, growling as he felt his skin tear. Shit, 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 shit! The amulet snapped back around his neck just as soon as he was about to get it off, and the skin reattaching as he clawed at it. In retaliation to his attempts, the amulet sent a searing jewel through his body. Oh fuck! Shit! What the fuck is happening to me? Get this thing off of me! He fell back into the river, flowing down the stream as he struggled with the amulet. Soon he came upon a rock, hitting it with force and splitting his head open. A muffled grunt came from him as he stopped fighting himself. Instead, he opted to crawl back up onto the bank, his hand clasping his head. Oh, fuck. Ow. He shook his head as he stood up. It's... It's stuck. 
He poked at the gem on the amulet, getting a flicker in return along with another burn. God damn it. <sighs> I guess I'm stuck with this thing for a while then. He looked up at the sunset as it finally fell, the moon coming up in its place. With the said time of day illuminating the riverbank, Scorn shivered, despite the burns. I better find shelter. At least for tonight. He turned his cape back into a pair of wings, flying up the mountain on his left and looking for an entrance to hide himself in while he slumbered. Seeing one not too far up, he cruised for it, landing before the mouth and rubbing his arm. <sighs> he turned towards the horizon, his eyes scanning for any ponies looking for him. Frowning, he took a seat, rolling his shoulder as his head still dripped with his own blood. Scorn didn't care. The alicorn amulet won't detach from him, so he figured it won't let him die either. His thoughts drifted back to the scene that he ran from, his eyes shutting tightly as he remembered every last detail of it. Just even the slightest hit of herbal sense made him want to puke. Ugh. God. He placed a hand on his stomach as he dismissed the suit, sighing as he sat there. Alone. And beyond scared of what tomorrow will bring. It was in that fear that he actually began to contemplate. Should he have gone with Celestian Luna back then? Sure, it wouldn't have been a good life, but it's a far cry from being... This. A pretender who's just trying to be hero, when in reality, he was constantly fighting himself day in and day out. He's an exposed power in a place that's supposed to make you feel safe and secure, like a nerve that's constantly throbbing with pain. It's a nightmare. Shaking his head, he leaned back against the cave wall, his eyes staring out at Equestria. Dwelling on the past didn't matter now. He chose this path, and has even faced consequences for it. It's about time I own up to them. I'm actually wondering if Scorn is going to integrate himself into Equestrian society, not like hiding away or anything like that. If he does, that'd be a big surprise, because that don't really seem like him. That'd still be pretty cool, though. Anyways, let's get on to our extremely cool donators. Top donators Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Ponyman. Courier Crew CI, Strix, Zar630, Narwhals, TacoCat598, Raiden, Black Moonheart, Dospo, Delta Omega, RuneSight the 9852, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Lightning Blitz, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Enderai 63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Hedge, Sky Ochia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kitsune 9, Lightskin, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, Divity Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal K Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vazuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hotra Plenkart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, and Daniel Beck. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.